in this video i am going to talk about um, some of the uh, popular data science algorithms um, that that most data science use in the daily activities the first one is the ols or uh, we call it as ordinary least square regression and um, in short we call it ols which stands for ordinary least square so this is a regression algorithm uh, which uh, is used to fit a linear line uh, to to the uh, to the to your dataset okay um, so say for instance you have you know a variable a target variable y which is continuous in nature and it depends on uh, a factor x so if you plot it in x and y z plane x and y plane uh, and just fit a regression line which uh, is given by y equal to you know beta naught plus beta one x where beta naught and beta one are uh, the uh, estimates we call that as a regression line fit okay and this can be used for two reasons two purposes okay one is for forecasting purpose so you can forecast to you know for the future so that's one purpose of uh, fitting a regression line the second one is to quantify the marginal effect okay so what is marginal effect it's like if you increase x by some amount what is going to be the corresponding increase in y that's marginal effect okay so you do that with uh, taking the first derivative of your target variable then this next algorithm uh, is the decision tree it's a popular algorithm uh it's it's a binary classifier um uh, which is used to choose one of uh one from the given decisions that you know using using the features that that uh, that you have been given so just to um, give you an example you have got uh, a target variable y which depends on you know x1 uh, x2 x3 and so on okay and this is a binary variable like it has got 0 and 1 so based on the value of x1 and x2 and x3 you just have to uh, you are required to uh, you know select the value of y to be 0 or 1 so it's a binary classifier uh, so using decision tree you can actually uh, find find that out okay um so a decision tree when when you visualize it looks something like this okay based on some criteria on x1 x2 and x3 which are the features you either select it as uh, y to be uh, you know 0 or 1 uh, which could take any any values okay any binary values okay the next one is the naive uh, the naive bayesian classif classification or classifier so this uses the bayesian theorem uh, if you're not familiar with bayesian theorem so this is the one which is the bayesian theorem you're trying to find out uh, the probability of event a happening given uh, event b okay um and it uses strong independent assumptions of features so whatever the features you are using in your data it assumes that there is strong independence there is no dependency uh, between the features it's very popular in text mining and uh, in in classifying your email to be spam or normal emails so it's a popular algorithm used uh, in text mining uh, or text analytics the next one is the logistic regression it's a popular algorithm um, and it's very simple to use it's also a, a algorithm to classify a data into uh, into two groups or multiple groups uh, so it's primarily used for a binary uh, classification or binomial for binomial target variable that means which takes a value of 2 um, and can be extended to multinomial okay so it can take you know 0 1 2 3 they're like four classes so we we call that as multinomial logistic regression which is an extension of logistic regression it's simple and it's linear in nature so the computation time is much less compared to some of the more complicated classification algorithms it's popular in credit scoring uh, in uh, credit and in risk analytics in banking and financial uh, service company also in insurance companies it's also uh, heavily used in marketing campaign analytics the form that it takes uh, is like this it you know you try to uh, model the log the log or um, you know using a linear combination of your features okay the next one is the sbm uh, or known as the support uh, vector uh, machine so uh, in this type of uh, this particular type of algorithm uh, uses uh, hyperplanes to separate uh, binary classes um so instead of uh, a linear uh, line it it, it actually uh, uses hyperplanes uh, multiple ones to separate data and hence the separation is more efficient in this case because uh, it takes into consideration the non linearity in the data which often uh you know often get uh, gets ignored uh, in simple um, classification algorithms like uh, uh, like you know logistic regression where uh, you know it's always assumed that uh, there is linearity and it's very highly scalable so it can be used for la uh, very large data set uh, even though there is uh, you know there is a consideration of non linearity there, there is a multiple um, you know hyperplanes uh, being used for classification uh, one would expect a, a lot of time for computation but uh, it is highly scalable in that in that sense the next one is the clustering algorithms um clustering algorithms uh, like so far what we have seen uh, can be considered as a supervised learning algorithm right supervised algorithm because you have a target variable uh, in whatever uh, algorithm that we learned so far but for clustering algorithms this is purely a unsupervised learning algorithm which doesn't have or doesn't use uh, a target variable for classification so what it does is it groups objects into different uh, types 
Okay, the similar objects to be one type. If you can see in the picture, you can see, uh, you know, uh, the uh, cross marks of different colors. So a, class, a, a clustering algorithm will do what? It is going to, it, it's going to group the similar looking uh, data points of, of maybe variables. Okay, um, so it does classification where there is no target variables. Okay, and that's important to note here. And it is used for dimension reduction and it's also used for segmentation purpose. The next one is the uh, PCA or the principal uh, component analysis okay so pca is used uh, for a number of purposes it's primarily used for dimension reduction where you want to uh, get down to a few number of variables from a large set of variables okay so what it does is it takes um, the orthogonal transformation of correlated variables uh, to uh, you know convert a number of correlated variable to a small number of uncorrelated principal components so the, the data set actually changes but the information remains the same okay so it does some kind of a data transformation so as to ensure that a large set of data set, a large set of variables, which are supposed to be very correlated, um, get down to a smaller set of variables, which are totally uncorrelated. But by the way, uh, the transform variables are totally different from the uh, the previous variables. Okay, so it takes some kind of a linear combination of variables to come up with the new variables, but the information uh, remains almost same. It's also used for regression purpose, so we call that as principal component regression. So what it does is it is it it uh, first uses PCA. To reduce uh, the number of features and then it uses linear regression which is known as pc uh, principal component regression the next one is the linear discriminant analysis it's used for classification of classes it's first used by uh, uh, ronald fisher and one of the famous um, example a famous uh, experiment that he made is on classifying flowers okay and he has got a very uh, that example has been uh, cited many uh, times for classification purposes um, so it is used for classifying two or more linear combination of features um, and it, it actually is a competitor to the linear regression, uh, sorry, logistic regression. So logistic regression is also another uh, classification technique and uh, LDA or linear discriminant analysis is also considered to be another good classification technique. And it's uh, heavily used in marketing science and also used uh, in medical science research where, uh, you know, medical scientists use for pattern uh, recognition in the, um, in the medical data. Thank you so much and please subscribe to our channel and please also contact us for anything you need.